in Jesus mighty name I want to continue my teaching this evening once again as we have a set since the beginning of the week that this week one it is all about first of all establishing the kingdom of God because we understand and realize that it is only within the parameters of the kingdom that a will can be enforced where there is no throne there is no will where there is no throne there is no will so in order for one to be able to establish into their lives the will of God as God had promised for us in these 21 days of prayer that it shall be on earth as it is in it shall be on earth as it is in heaven it is necessary for us to make sure that number one we get to deal with all the kingdoms and all that the enemy has set upon our lives that totally needs it to be overturned praise the Lord we cannot establish something new without first of all breaking the old. That is the reason why Mr. Peter Babu says Jesus will speak and stands before the temple and he says first to destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. If God wants to rebuild something, it has first to be destroyed. So whatever evil foundation that has been established on your life, it has to first be destroyed before God can impose his kingdom. Because you understand you and I as we encounter God and as we move in our surrounding and as we encounter the presence of God, that the enemy often wants to impose himself where he is not needed or invited. The enemy's mindset is always to impose himself where he's not needed, where he's not invited, where he's not desired. Nobody asked for Satan to be in the Garden of Eden. There is nobody that invited him in the Garden of Eden. But he finds a way to invite himself in places where he's not expected. He finds a way to invite himself into environments where nobody has wanted him to be there. You will even hear that in the book of Job chapter number 1, the Bible says when the sons of God were gathering, Satan also came in their midst. Was also a meeting that concerned him? No, it was not a meeting that concerned him because it was a meeting of the sons of God. But Satan has a way to invite himself into places where he is not needed dead no invited so i am here to tell you when you see the devil on your double laps don't say how we invited him he invite himself he's a specialist guest on himself he shows up at your door he shows up at your house he shows up in your business he shows up in your marriage he shows up where you don't expect him to show up but when he shows up beloved it does not mean that we need to leave him there we cannot in fact enforce the will of God into a ground where the devil has taken over. We cannot enforce the will of God into an environment where the enemy is still ruling. Before the will of God can be enforced, we have to make sure that first of all, the enemy is driven out of such environment. Somebody give me a better amen. And so tonight, I want to deal with the third kingdom that we are going to overturn. We first dealt with the kingdom of the Assyrian. Yesterday, we dealt with the kingdom of the Syrian through Benadad. Today, we want to deal with the kingdom of Moab. The kingdom of Moab. Glory to God. Come with me in the book of Numbers chapter 22. Numbers uh, chapter 22. Let's take reading from... Numbers chapter 22, verses number 1. Numbers 22. Let's read from verses number 1. Praise the Lord. Numbers 22. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab, on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, so all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because there were many. Moab was sick with fear because of the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us. As an ox licks up the grass of the field. 
Balak, son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at the time. Then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Behor, at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once. Curse these people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that him you bless is blessed, and him who you curse is cursed. Verse 7, I want you to read it with me, 1, 2, 3. So the elders of, and the elders of Madden departed with the diviner's fee at their hand, and they came to Balaam and spoke the words of Balak. They departed with what? The diviner's fee. In other words, they came with presents and things to give so that whatever they were requesting, it shall be granted to them. This is the word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Father, thank you for the spirit of your word that is coming out tonight. Thank you for the open heaven. Thank you for the revelation that shall flow. Lord, I yield my being. I yield my mouth. I yield my spirit, my mind, my spirit, my body, and all that I have. Even my organs as I shall be speaking unto your word. Lord, in Jesus' name, say what you are saying to your people tonight. Transform their life in a manner that only you can. By the power of, the, of your word, let everyone come out of this place blessed, transformed in Jesus' mighty name let me hear somebody say amen. amen hallelujah i have been saying to us since monday that we were going to be focusing this week on his kingdom come and i said to us before his kingdom can come in our life we have to make sure that the kingdom of the enemy is overturned and i began to say to us that there are certain categories of kingdom that we need to deal with in order for us to render space for the kingdom of god to be established in our lives and so we dealt with the Assyrians, we dealt with the Syrians, and tonight we are dealing with the kingdom of Moab, which is represented by King Balak. Somebody say Balak. Now you have to understand, beloved, that our destiny and our steps are ordered by God. You are not where you are by your own desires. You are where you are because of the grace of God that is carrying you. None of us can be where we are by our own selves. I understand that sometimes, you know, there are people that are born into good families and stuff like that. Everything pretty much explains where they are in life. But I can tell you, even when there are things and elements in your life and in your, in your existence that explains why you are where you are, I can tell you for free, you wouldn't be where you are without God. You wouldn't stand where you are without God. Because God is the very essence of the very existence that we possess. Now listen and realize this, my friends and brothers, as we gather before the presence of the Lord this evening, it is to understand, beloved, that there are people in this world that we will wish to impose their will on your life. I never understand it. When a person who is born and they grow up and one day they decide that what they think of you is what they, you should be. That out of everything that is going on in your life, what they have as opinion of your life is what which you should respect. They think that if they say a word concerning you, it is that word which you must obey and you must follow to the letter. Let me tell you, beloved in the Lord, that this is in fact the mindset of people who think that because of their presence in your life, they have an obligation to voice their will concerning you. But those who wish to stop you and impose their will on you, listen beloved, you will notice something about them is that they are mostly informed about your life. I can tell you, beloved, anybody that wants to impose their will, their agenda to your life, they are people that follow your life to the T. 
They know where you are. They know who you were with. They know who you hang out with. They know where you ate yesterday. They know where you are right now. They know. They, 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 they in fact, have spent their life to try to know as much as they need to know concerning you. And it is amazing when we read this text that before Israel even reached Moab, before even Israel reached where they were supposed to be, the king of Balak, in fact the king Balak, has already gotten all the information from the moment they left Egypt. You are thinking that it is news to them that you are next to them, but they have been following you since the Lord brought down the Red Sea and delivered you out of that place. Let me tell you something, beloved. That there are people who have made it an obsession to follow you. There are people who have made it an obsession to know your every move. What you do, where you go, who you meet. Tracking your every mood as if they will get ahead of the direction. Or well, let me tell you, there are people who think that if they were to follow you, they will get ahead of you. But let me tell you, that is just an obsession. But there are people who can disguise themselves as fans, as disciples, as followers, as members, as mentors, as coach, as papa, as daddy. But their assignment is to simply gain proximity with you so that where you are going, they can know. I am coming. There are people that will befriend you with just simple one intention. It is not to add to you. It is not to bring something to your life. It is not to bless you or be a blessing to your life. Their single motive is to make sure that they at least know where you are going to be. Let me tell you friends that they come up whenever they have a chance. And whenever they feel like your life begins to take a trajectory of what it was supposed to be, you will often hear these people begin to advise you not to go in that direction. Not because the way is not the way, but because they know that if you take that way, they will lose control of you. Because they know that if you take that way, you will reach a success that they cannot be able to control no more. Because they know that if you will take that, that, that decision, you are gone for life. But there are people who rather have you sit in humiliation and support you in everything. Because in that stage, in that state of your life, they have control over your life. Let me tell you that you have to wise up in 2024. I say you have to wise up in 2024. Not every relationship is a relationship that is pushing you forward. There are people that are coming from far to come near you simply because they want to keep track of where you are going. Can you imagine that the worst kind of criminals always befriend the police? I'll repeat it again. The worst kind of criminals always befriend who? The police. Why do they befriend the police? It is not so that, you know, uh, you know, when they're in trouble for the police. Will, no, it is so that they can get inner information and track the move of the police. They can see them coming. They can know that they are coming. But it's important for you to understand that Balak was striking the move of, of the Israelite from the moment they left Egypt. The sound and the things that God was doing with the Israelite was coming as news to him and he kept track. There are people that are so obsessed to know what is it that you are doing, where you are going. Let me tell you, it is not because they are your sponsors. It is not because they are your fans. It is simply because they are in fact wanting to strategically set themselves on your path and so that they can be able to stop you from where you are going. Now the amazing thing is this. When Balak son of Zippor will see that all Israel had done, number one to their neighbors, the Amorites, he will see all that he had done to them. The Bible says that it was not even, when you read in chapter 21, it was not even their intention in fact to go and fight the Ammonites. They were just passing by. They were just they were just passing by. It was not their assignment. They just simply say, listen, we want to pass through your gates. Allow us to pass. But the Bible says that instead of them allowing them to pass, these people decided that they would shut the door before them. And Israel, since they were on their assignment to go possess the land, the promised land, the Bible said they will fight them until they destroyed, utterly, utterly destroyed them. So the king Balak heard the news. 
that our neighbors have been touched. We are next. Now they began to be afraid. They started asking themselves, what can we do? What can we do to stop these people from reaching to us? What can we do to stop them from getting to where we are? How do we stop them? And the Bible said the king Balak would stand with a strategy. And the strategy was to send elders. To send what? To send elders, the elders of Madden, to go seek a prophet. To go seek a prophet. And this prophet had an assignment to come and find a mechanism that was going to stop the Israelites from becoming what they were supposed to do. I want to tell you this evening, beloved, that Balak was watching their move and he was afraid and he did not know how to stop them and the only strategy he could have found was to implore the solicit implore if not to solicit the services of a prophet so that he will come and get it and engage this battle from a spiritual ground let me tell you this evening three things that are major and they are important for you in this story number one whenever the enemy find no means of stopping you physically. He always requires spiritual or he solicits spiritual implication to stop you. Anybody that can stop you with finances, they can stop you with their money. They don't need a witchcraft. Anybody that can stop you with their influence. There are people who are so powerful that one phone call is enough. Nobody will ever hire you. But if one phone call was enough to call anybody that they can call so that you are not hired, but you are still hired somehow, they will take their battles not only on the level of their influence, but they will take their battle on the level of the spirits. If Balak had the power to stop the Israelites, he would have fought them. But he knew that if I engage in this battle physically, I will lose it. So what did he have to do? He needed to find a way to engage a battle on a spiritual level. Whenever a battle gets to the spiritual level, know that it has failed physically. A person cannot destroy you physically if they have their means to come and do how you arm physically. They don't need to do it spiritually. They will often request and require motives when they have failed to touch you in the physical. If you don't have access to me, how do you kill me? Now you need to find some ways to reach me without reaching me. You will have to find access to touch me without touching me. You will have to find access to get into my house without having to get and knock on my door. So what will that mechanism be? It becomes a spiritual warfare. When Balak was in front of the Israelite, he had an opportunity to mobilize the entire army. But he knew that even if I mobilize this entire army, the Amorite, my friend, just did that, but it did not work. But if I am going to help them, and I'm going to, in fact, have power over them, I need to solicit spirits. I need to do what? Solicit spirits. And for you to solicit spirits, you need to have someone that is in contact with the world of the spirit. And in this case, it was a prophet by the name of Balaam. They said, let us go to him. And when we go to him, let us make sure that we don't go empty-ended. I am so surprised that it is only the people who are of the other side that understand some principles. These people knew and understood that you don't show up at the prophet empty-ended. Oh, you will tell me that is the Old Testament. I will tell you the day they went to see Jesus, the people sought and said, We are coming to worship the master and we have brought presents. So these guys... We're making sure that we are received well. We honor the anointing. We honor the vessel. We respect his time. He doesn't charge a fee, but in this text they say that they came with the diviner's fee. Because they made sure that we receive which that we are looking for. I want you to understand, friends and brothers, that there are certain battles that are no longer on a physical level. I'm sorry. 
it is no longer on a physical level. The, the, the battle you are dealing with, it is no longer about biology, it is no longer about medicine. It has become something spiritual. I met a guy, about, about, I mean, a, a lady, about a, 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 a month ago. That lady mama was working on a, a, in, a, in, a, in a public, in a public, in a public work or a public enterprise or public a company and so in that place where she was working she she was working as an accountant and so in that place she has been there for the longest possible while she was working there friends people wanted a house and they did everything to sabotage their work to complicate the math the accounting but somewhere somehow this lady was also also strong and was always finding a way to solve the issue so they said we are going to find some mooties and the 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 I don't know what they call it. They just struck her with something that started bringing a wound on this side of the eye a wound that started just rotting day after day to the point that you can start seeing the bones inside I mean, the kind of things, if you look at it, it's like an horror movie. Because they could not fight her and win against her. When it comes to the technicality of her work, they went out to solicit spirits in order for her to be stopped. I have never seen such a stubborn person. She has that thing on her face. And a wound that is, that is, that is root, that is becoming rotten. And you can almost begin to see uh, the bones into her face. She goes and find this uh, a wig you have. And then it just shut one eye. You know that kind. You know, it shut one eye. And she shows up and people are asking, what is going on with this lady? Almost nobody. I mean, she is efficient in her work. Nobody knows what was going on. So, we pray with one of her daughters. And the brother, when we saw that lady, brothers and sisters, you cannot believe what was going on. If she just lift up that thing that she was, I mean, you would say, oh my God, what a bobcat, what, whatever you call it, what a, what a style. Oh my God, this old lady, she has a style. But if she just lift it, it is like half a vampire, half a person. Why? Because when they cannot touch you physically, when they cannot touch you and remove you from your position, they find mechanism by which they can be able to abstract. Now, how do you work? It is only a matter of time. Thanks be to God. We started praying for her. And as we started praying for her, and we sent in one of the, the, the intercessors and, and one of the guys that were helping her, they started treating that wound, beloved. This was no longer just treatment. This was anointment, prayer, and treatment. All things together combined. And things that started coming out, friends, you, you, you will not eat. You will not eat. But today, if you see her face, just in a month's time, it has been restored. Why? Because when the enemy has missed you physically, you have to be ready for the spiritual battles. So many of us are hiding behind our position. We, we say, you know, my, my thing is secure. Nobody will shake me. Nobody will do me. I am telling you there are people, it, you are sitting with your computer and it is written in front of your desk, CEO. But the next day you wake up, you are in the dungeon. You are out of job. How did it happen? They are evil spirits. Somebody say, I will not be touched. So Balak understood that we needed to take this battle to a higher level. And to take it to a higher level, it needed to be taken to a spiritual level. So in, in, in their attempt to solicit this man, number one, listen to me, they will use manipulation. They will use what? They will use manipulation. In the way they will explain the story, they will manipulate the prophet to be predisposed to spend the spell. You know there are people when you hear their story, you really need to use discernment. Because there are people when they are selling you story, they are not just selling you, they are, they are not just telling you what is going on. They are in fact positioning you to do what they want you to do. We live in a world of manipulators. Everybody wants to position things so that they can get what they want. 
Israel has not moved their feet yet. Israel has not come out yet. But yet, the man is saying that these people are going to kill us. These people are going to lick everything they have. They have not even yet attacked you. Who told you they're going to fight you? But when they go solicit the work and the services of this prophet by the name of Balak, they will inspire. In fact, they will claim, they will, they will frame the story in a way that Balaam has no choice but to go with them. Be careful with manipulators. I say be careful with manipulators. They will use spiritual authority and go borrow, go borrow influence so that they can get what they want. They went in with present to manipulate the guy. But you have to understand that God can never be bribed. Oh, you didn't say amen. I said God can never be bribed. I said again, God can never be bribed. It cannot be manipulated. No matter the story, how you want to frame it, God knows the truth. There are people that will come and tell you a story so that you will turn your back against somebody. There are people when, when they have failed to do what they need to do, they will now just start going around and telling a side of story that never exists. Even yourself, when you hear it, you say, was it I or somebody else? Was it in a dream or was it physically? May the Lord deliver you from manipulators. I say, may the Lord deliver you from manipulators. I said again, may the Lord deliver you from manipulators. So they will go manipulate the man of God. As the man of God was going, God will ask him, who are these people in your house? He said, I do not know. There are people that came and solicited my services. And say, where, where, where are you going with them? He said, they said that I must come and meet their king. God said, don't go. The man stayed. And tomorrow again, he insisted. They came with another speech. God said, don't go. The third time, since he insisted, God said, go with them. But only say what I will say. Now friends, this is where it gets scary. It's because as soon as the man accepts to go with them, the guy is ready to raise seven altars and on each altars there is going to be seven bulls. I mean two bulls on each altars. Which makes it 14 sacrifices of bulls that are going to be shedding their blood so that this man can raise his voice and curse Israel. The mechanism that this king will use is that of spell and witchcraft through the invocation of spirits. There are people that are ready to go sleep in the cemetery so that you will get a divorce. There are people that are ready to go and make covenant with the dead so that your children do not succeed. There are people that are ready, listen, to do all that is required. Prophet Deflet, Prophet Eligras used to tell us that there are people that are ready to give their leg and say, amputate my leg. If it will demand you amputating my leg, take my leg away so that him does not get children. Let me tell you, sometimes the enemy is ready to make crazy sacrifices and while we are joking, while we are playing, he was ready to raise on seven altars two sacrifices. All of it so that a man will stand and speak a word. We are neglecting words, but he understood the power of a spoken word. The man said, whatever it takes. He said, raise me seven altars. The man raised seven altars. He said, put on every altar two bulls. The man put two bulls on every altar. When he raises his voice, ah, when he raises his voice to start pronouncing the curse because the configuration of invocation was found and it was in fact fulfilled all of a sudden, beloved, the words that were coming out of his mouth were words of blessing and not of curse because they did not know that Israel was already under the dominion of the king of kings. Oh, tonight I am here to declare upon your life in the name of Jesus that the king of Moab will not have his way against your life. Your life and your family is already under the dominion of God. Your children are under the dominion of God. Oh yes, they are still kids. They do not have yet an awareness of the things of God.
God but let me tell you by blood covenant of Jesus Christ they are already under the influence of the kingdom of God and that's why in Numbers 23 23 the Bible says come on for there is no witchcraft against Jacob there is no divination against Israel it shall be said of Jacob it shall be said of Israel what the Lord has done I am here to tell you that they had three assignments and the first assignment that the king of Palak was seeking is to use witchcraft to stop their momentum you started the year well already you started the year well already I said you started the year well already but the enemy is seeing the momentum you have he's seeing the speed you are getting he's seeing the track you are getting and he said how do I stop it I need to spell I need to cast a witchcraft upon him I need to cast a spell upon him but what he doesn't realize is that before he cast a spell there was already the cover of his card kingdom there was already a cover of his dominion over your life there was already a cover somebody said there's already a cover yeah. or if I'm talking to you somebody said there's already a cover they will try to stop you this year but it will not work for there is already a cover they will try to stop you in your business this year it will not work for there is already a cover they will try to break down your marriage it will not work for there is already a cover I am declaring today there is a cover over your life that witchcraft can revoke there is a cover over your life uh, that sorcery cannot revoke. Uh, there is a cover over your life uh, that the powers of hell cannot be able to revoke. They were making all these enchantments to make sure that they denied you the right of passage to your next level. There you are. Everything that you should do on this level, you have done it. The next level is calling you. But yet there is a devil. There is a witchcraft. There is a spell that wants to deny you the right of passage. I am not even going to you. This is where I am going. But I need to use your road. I am telling you tonight. Anybody that want to stand in your way. In this year 2024. May they encounter the power of God. Somebody say power. Oh, let me hear somebody say power. Louder. Louder. I decree and I declare on your way to the next level, nobody will stop you. No, anybody that want to stop you shall encounter the power. I say shall encounter the power. Anybody that want to stop your promotion, stop your business, stop your marriage, stop your business, stop your career, stop your studies. I declare tonight, may they encounter power. Rama, let me hear you say power. Oh, look at your neighbor. Say power is not powder. Oh my God, power is not powder. You don't play with it. You don't play with fire. I serve a consuming fire. I serve a God who is able to move mountains. Balak, who are you to stand in the way? Balak, who are you to stand in the way? I came to declare tonight the reign of Moab shall be overturned. Somebody say overturn. Somebody say overturn. Let me hear you say overturn. Anybody that want to deny you the right of passage to your next level. From poverty to wealth. From sickness to healing. From my talatopatia. Somebody shout overturn. Let me hear somebody say overturn. Because all of these things, manipulation, spells, witchcraft, altars, was all mechanism not to stop them from getting to mob but this was to stop them to get to the promised land tonight anybody that wants to stop you from getting into your promised land may they encounter the fire of God 